something that I believe is probably the most dangerous aspect of, let's say, the culture surrounding um, uh, growing up in the church as well as uh, growing up in kind of the military environment um, is how well you learn to fake it. I know that from experience because of the fact that as a kid growing up, I grew up in church and um, Sunday school every morning, you go to service sometimes, uh, and then you had church in the evening, that's how long ago it was, um, there was a Sunday morning and a Sunday night service every uh, Sunday, except for fifth Sundays, they would give it to us off, which I loved, because that meant we could stay home and watch football, um, and like just every Sunday was like that, Wednesday night we came back and we had the midweek thing, Royal Rangers, or uh, the youth small group, the whatever, right, and so it was like that every week of my whole life growing up, and so I learned all of the answers to all of the questions. Everything was about Jesus, or about Moses, or about the Ten Commandments, or doing what your parents tell you to do. And so, then when I got up into high school, um, I decided, like, I didn't want any of that anymore. I didn't want to be a Christian because it seemed so fake, and, um, just all the typical excuses or um, reasonings people tend to cite, racism or um, uh, mistreatment of the poor, um, just stuff like that. Um, why am I suffering? Why is anyone suffering um, if God is truly all loving? Like all of that stuff. But because I was still like, I was still a kid living in my parents' house, right? And they went to church meant that I had to continue going to church, whether I wanted to or not. And they they had no idea, quite frankly. They had, they didn't know. I didn't tell them. Um, and so, what I learned how to do, even more so than the Sunday school type answers, was that I learned how to fake it every Sunday. I learned I when do you raise your hands? When do you uh, stand, when do you sit, um, just all the stuff, that you, like, in order to play the role of a Christian, uh, on a daily basis, and I think in a military aspect, because I have a wife and a brother now that are both in the, in the life, military, um, you're expected to put on a face like that a lot of the time, that even though, um, you're expected to respect the flag, you're expected to stand for the national anthem, you're expected to kind of try to, like, sniff back the tears when your parents are going on deployment or when they're coming back and it's routine and just, like, that, um, it makes it difficult to be authentic with how you feel. It's one of the things that's kind of created a little bit of that stigma behind um, the PTSD and, um, depression, anxiety that a lot of veterans feel. And so what am I, what am I getting at? I think the main thing that if you have a veteran in your life, whether that's even you, yourself, or if that's your spouse, one of your children, one of your parents, if you have a veteran in your life and you're thinking about a gift that you would like to give them today to honor Veterans Day, I think the biggest, the most important gift that you can give them is the permission to be authentic with how they feel. That they just to let them express their emotions in a real way without the fear of you recoiling away from them without the fear of um now obviously i mean this is within healthy responsible boundaries and limitations i mean don't um this is an excuse to enable an abuser 
or to enable a substance abuse or something like that. It's not that. Don't mistake me. But I think just as a listening ear and a confident, trusting hand on the shoulder, just um, because you like it's not that hard to tell when you're talking to someone and when they're listening versus they're either just looking for a reply or they're just kind of being the polite thing. It's very easy to tell the difference. I think we put up uh, a lot with people that treat, or at least veterans, or in my context, what we're talking about, um, put up with a lot of people where they feign that interest in what you're saying, even though they really just don't care. They don't. They they don't want to know the pain that you're going through, um, or the questions that you have deep in your soul, or whatever. And so they just kind of smile, nod, whatever, um, pamphlet answers to things in order to just, whatever, okay, um, let's go to the next thing. Uh, and I think that does more disservice than anything. If you don't want to hear it, you don't want to listen, you don't want to be a part of that, just say that so that neither one of us has to fake it, in, like, that you do anymore and if that's you of that you don't want to hear it because it hurt it causes you pain to hear about other pain then I'd say um, you have some stuff you need to work on um, especially like if that's somebody that you love and you care about like there's something that you need to work on there so that you can cross that bridge because they need you but um, anyways uh, nevertheless, um, what I'm getting at is just for all the veterans out there, uh, happy Veterans Day and uh, always keep fighting.